Uh, time for an update. It's Tuesday, and I'm back to civilization. This is uh, Quebec City, Quebec, just the uh, eastern eastern part over there in the distance. You can see Auto Route 40, and that Petro Pass across the street. That's where I spend the night on the way to Cetil. And now this is uh, Ultramart. Ultramart. And this place is crazy, you know. I uh, I try to sleep, but the people started. I was saying that this place is crazy, you know. And uh, don't mind my voice. I feel a bit sick because uh, I think I caught a cold. Don't worry, it's not contagious over the video. But what happened is that the weather was like this, you know, lots of sunshine, right? And then as you drive north, all of a sudden I was watching my uh, thermometer and I see it started falling, like drastically, you know? 20, 18, 15, 10, 5. And then it feels fine inside the truck. You know, very warm and I was just driving in my t-shirt and then I stepped out a couple of times. And I think that's how I how I got it. So now I gotta use lots of these and drink lots of this. So hopefully it'll go away. So I was supposed to do some uh, kettlebell training today because I try to do it every second day but I don't feel up to it. Now uh, what happened over there when I was unloading uh, you probably, I don't know, did I show it? Oh, I didn't show how I, how I was at the gate and stuff. Basically, those guys, see, like, it's very hard to communicate, right? We speak English, and I ask them, I, I saw them on the ferry, right? So I show them the piece of paper, I said, this is the correct address. And the guy says, yeah, yeah, we'll just wait for you at the gate. And I said, what is this? Is this a construction site? Yeah, it's a project site. Okay. So I go there and there's uh, two gates, one in the distance, one next to me, and it's a port. It's basically, uh, that Setil, it's a huge port. And the address I had was for the port. And I'm right at the water, and there's nowhere else to go. And there's a girl, security, and she speaks English, so we start talking. I show her my paperwork, she has no idea what it is. And I said, I have these phone numbers here. Maybe you can call them. And she says, oh, I'm sorry. I don't have a long distance on my on my phone. And the numbers were from Montreal. So I said, okay, I'll call them myself. So I call them. It turns out there was another gate. And the guy started. He says, can you see me? Turn your head. I see your truck. You can see me waving. And I looked at He was like 400 meters away. So I put down my uh, sniper rifle and uh, drove over there. And it turns out it's a port and these guys are renting some space for their machinery inside. And the thing is, the place where all this was going, it's a huge mine in a Labrador city. Or of course, not in downtown Labrador city, but uh, somewhere near Labrador, basically it's Newfoundland. And that mine is connected to the port. It's 400 kilometers or what, 240 miles. It's connected with the railroad or railway, as they say in, in, uh, in Greece. And so these guys, it's a railroad company. They service the tracks and they lay down new tracks, you know, fixed tracks. And that's what the machine I brought for, of course, that's what it was for. So, so, so it's not a, it was not a project, it was the port. And once again, this would make my job so much easier if I knew that this was a port, you know, because you have to go in, you have to check in. Uh, and they made me see a video and that's where I learned all these uh, interesting things about the mine, you know. I forgot the name of the company, it starts with a T. And they say they, they mine ore. So basically, I think the stuff that they used to make metal, right? And they ship that ore everywhere. And actually inside the port, I saw like huge mountains of this dark 
kind of like dirt you know but you can see it's not dirt it's kind of like silver like the sign the color of my trailer and so I loaded that the guy drove it off I hooked back on and they had to escort me in and out of that uh, of that port you know very big property no filming allowed and then I just drove one hour or 60 kilometers that takes like it takes 60 minutes to do 40 miles that's how bad that road was like very you know stressful and tires you out pretty fast and the night before I spent in this uh, port port Kati port Kati and it's written like Cartier you know like the jeweler store and I asked this guy I said how do you pronounce it and he says oh port Kati okay and I found there was uh, coffee there and there was a big grocery store what is it, IGA and so I drove back there and uh, bought some groceries and sat there like for, for an hour had my lunch and then the dispatch says uh, the scariest thing I heard in the past few days they say um, keep driving west on 138 but do not pass what was it 358 uh, he says the town is Baie Comu, you know, B A I U. Do not pass that one. I might have a load near Labrador City. <laughs> okay, so you look up on the map, and that from that town there's a highway that goes straight north for another six hours, basically to Labrador City, right where this mine is. Only from Setil, you have to take the railroad. Here, this is the road that goes there. And it looks much worse, like the line is thinner than this 138. And okay, so I drove over there and I stopped and I sent him a message. I said, you know what? I really don't want to do this. You know, I don't care about the money, but after this one, after 138, I really don't want to go on this one. And they sent me an answer. They said, oh, actually that load did not, uh, it, it fell off, as they say, you know did materialize so and so I kept driving I just drove west and they told me oh we might find something for you uh, tomorrow which is today and uh, I sent him an email this morning I said what do you guys you want me to keep driving west or what and they said uh, and I quote sit tight and see what we can do with you this morning sit tight and see what they can do with me this morning so I'm sitting tight oh and funny thing happened yesterday uh, I was driving on this uh, 138 already out of these mountains and like you drive basically next to the river flat thanks God no more mountains like the past maybe 20 kilometers before this place uh, just before you hit 40 because 138 merges with uh, freeway 40 and this past 20 kilometers there's a whole bunch of lights and I remember I saw some uh, uh, truck stops over there because I didn't I didn't think I would uh, you know I thought I would be too tired to come to this place because this was like 650 kilometers from Satil and on that road it felt like I don't know 800 miles seriously and so I was looking for, I remember I saw the truck stops on the other side. And it's like a city city road, but it's a divided. You cannot cross unless you turn. And actually I went in, into the left lane because I saw this Irving thing. And I went into the left lane at the lights and then I see I, there's no access, you know. like if, Even if I turn left, I couldn't get in, inside the truck stop. I think the only way to get into it was from the other side but there's a divider and anyway so I had no, I said forget it I'll just drive to this place that I know um, and I'm right next to 40 now so I'm ready to to you know start the truck and keep driving there's no more lights right and the funny thing that I, I meant happened was that every like half a mile there was a sign that said demi tour 
D A D E M I and then T O U R. Demi Tour. And I'm driving. And on my left is this huge St. Lawrence River, right? And this says Demi Tour and there's an arrow towards the river. And uh, I'm thinking, okay, tour. I understand tour. So tours, but Demi. That doesn't sound like right at all. Like Demi, a boat? Boat tours? No, walking tours, helicopter tours, bus tours, you know? And that thing kept bugging me because, like I said, that sign with that arrow was happening <laughs> every half a mile. So finally yesterday, and you know, that's, what, that's how you learn things, right? Uh, repetition is the mother of all learning. Repetitio est, uh, est uh, mater studiorum, as they taught us in Latin. In, in the university and so I open my smartphone you know thanks God for these smartphones and I just type in Google what does demi tour mean in French and to my utter surprise I thought it would say I don't know walking tours because there was a river right to my other surprise it says demi tour means turnaround <laughs> That caught me totally off guard, you know, like, I know tour, right, like Tour de France, okay, but tour in English, it's always associated with a trip, right, trip, guided trip, you know, so it turns out it's a turnaround, and there was no English, like, you know, I'm not, some people were complaining about me, right, I'm not racist, right, like the previous video, you just saw what it feels, to be English speaking in Quebec you know like if you cannot handle the truth don't watch this channel right I don't do BS I tell you how I feel I tell you what happened and I try to be funny about it and I'm not racist I grew up in Soviet Union with uh, 15 republics uh, that broke away later right and then each republic turns out they had like 10 smaller nationalities inside so and I live in Canada where you go on a bus in Toronto, like I always joke, and let's say there's 20 people on the bus or a streetcar, and there'll be uh, 10 Chinese guys, uh, four Indian guys, two Italians, some other guys, and there'll be one white guy, me, and I'm not even Canadian or American. So don't get me started on this racial profiling thing. It's just that the language barrier here. It, it really makes you know life for a trucker difficult that's what I'm trying to say you see like the situation with the port the guy says we oui, we oui, oh and then when I was loading right if you remember when I was loading there was this guy next to me loading a container French guy right and he spoke English but we were miscommunicating all the time because he was coming in I had the space to turn around actually they wanted me to move the truck to the farther side of the lot so that this guy can come in and they can load this container on him right when I already had that machine so I'm trying to go forward and then back and I open the window this guy is like three meters away from me ten feet and I say could you please go back go back a little so I can back in here and the guy says okay and he nods his head and then he drives in you know he drives in so I had to go forward and he had to go around me and then when we were leaving uh, we both done right and I'm closer to the exit and he parked next to me and I see he's doing some paperwork I open the window and I say do you want to go first because his engine was already running and he says yeah and then nothing happens. He still does, he's still doing his paperwork. <laughs> you think I'm making this up? You think I have some prejudice against French people? Well, maybe I do, right? Not the French people, but French language, because it's it's the barrier, what makes things difficult. The guy says, yes, and he keeps sitting. So I drove out. And that's what I mean, like, it's just, it's difficult for truckers, you know, to from, uh, unless you come here all the time, unless you grew up here. That's why I said, it feels like a different planet. And some people were, what? Yeah, it's like when I'm, when I'm, as an English-speaking guy, when I'm entering Quebec, to me it's like really like a foreign country, because everything is different and it's not, it's not funny. And I'm a citizen of Canada, Quebec is part of Canada, 
So I'm a citizen of Quebec, right? It's the same country. And so I was thinking about this, you know, and uh, I read some comments and I go inside the, the, the store to get coffee and to buy these napkins because I was just dying overnight, you know. Uh, and uh, I say, oh, and there's a lineup. And I'm thinking, please don't ask me, you know, questions. Just, I have coffee, I have, I bought some salad. Actually, they had these nice, you know, I didn't see these yesterday. I guess they, they this was the last one, you know, like nice beans and uh, I love this stuff. What is it called? Uh, mixed beans salad. Salad haricot vinaigre. Anyway, so it looks like this, you know, very nice salad. So I have salad, I have coffee and I have the napkins for my running nose. And I'm thinking, please don't ask me too many questions, you know, just... I have the money, right? And there's a guy in front of me, and this young girl, she asks him, and she talks to him for like 10 minutes. And if, oh no, yeah, oh sure. And I come in to the calendar when it's my turn, and I say, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be very polite. I said, I'm sorry, I don't speak English. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't speak French, and I'm sure that you don't speak English, so... And I show her the money. And this young girl, maybe, you know, 22 years old, and she says, uh, Oh, I speak English. Okay, cool. So I, I, I tested her. I said, uh, how do you say, turn around in English, in French? I said, I saw the sign, Demi Tour. And of course she doesn't understand me because I pronounce it, uh, I think it's demi, but like the way we pronounce vowel, uh, consonants and vowels in English, it's much harder than in French, so... And, then, and she says, yeah, demi, demi tour, that's the turnaround. So, so I met some uh, open-minded Quebecois this morning. And actually that's been my experience. Uh, I think they did something at schools. Or maybe it's because of music and movies and stuff like that. And actually, compared to, let's say, 10 years ago, I see lots of young guys and gals uh, speak English and they listen to English language music, you know. Uh, I think that music and movies, they play a big part in this. But yeah, older generation, they don't care. They can spend the whole time, in uh, the whole life in one town. So they don't need English, you know, they hate they don't appreciate strangers coming to their land and uh, trying to, you know, use something they're not familiar with. Oh, I saw this morning. Oh, and uh, there's this movie, Sahara, I think. Yeah, about these guys trying to find a submarine in Africa with a whole bunch of uh, gold coins back from the Civil War. There's Matthew McConaughey, and it's a great movie. I love it. I think I... Oh, I give it away. I give it away to my favorite Mac shop. And anyway, in that movie, they are driving somewhere in Somalia or something, on the boat on the river, and these uh, reb uh, rebels, rebels stop them and ask them in English, you know, are you Americans? And the Matthew McConaughey's character says, I'm sorry, I don't speak English. And, <laughs> and the fighter says, but you are speaking English now. And he says, oh no, I only know how to say I don't speak English. Which reminded me that, you know, these, you know, people here, right, they often say, oh, like yesterday, there was another girl on duty here. She says, I'm sorry, I don't speak English. Okay, so I decided to learn how to say I don't speak French, in French. So, <laughs> which of course is funny because you're speaking French and you're saying you don't speak French. So I went on YouTube, thanks God for YouTube, on top of the smartphones. And you just type in how to say I don't speak French in French. And there's all kinds of instructions, there's pretty girls, bilingual girls, maybe I should do something like that in Russian, you know. How to say simple things in Russian? I think it would be might be of interest to some uh, 
to some viewers and this girl she she has a whole bunch of expressions that you can pick and click on and she will show you like a one minute long video how to pronounce something like I'm sorry I don't understand yes no uh, I don't speak French and so I think I learned it je ne parle pas François no wait je ne parle pas je ne parle pas français I think je ne parle pas français something like that oh and then to add to confusion they say in spoken French people often don't use ne so how do you figure out if they say they speak French or they don't speak French oh boy very confusing here Je ne parle pas français. Je ne parle. Yeah, parle. Parle. Speak. Je parle français. I think that should mean I speak French. Je ne parle pas français. I don't speak French. So that's my goal. I'm going to learn how to say that sentence with a perfect. French diction and intonation and tone so that it will sound totally ridiculous that this guy can actually speak fluent French that's my secret weapon when coming to Quebec or like some guy suggested I might just you know speak Russian and see how you feel because you know Indian guys right they come to Canada and they wear turbans because they want to keep their culture which of course uh, raises the question if uh, and again I'm probably gonna get some comments for this but I'm sorry that's how I feel if you are such a fan of India right why did you leave because I'm Russian, you don't see me wearing, I know, those dancing pants, you know, and high boots and special Russian hats, right? And some of those shirts, you know, like in Russia, in old times they used to wear uh, very long shirts, like made out of silk, and they only had like three buttons in here. But now you can see answers uh, when you see some traditional Russian dance, like folk dance. That's what I mean. So that's like a typical Russian uh, costume, so to speak. So you don't see me wearing that. Well, occasionally I wear it, uh, that hat that the Uzbek guy gave to me, but I don't do that. Why? Because I left Russia because I was not happy there, right? So I came here and I'm trying to assimilate the culture of this country. And so that thing when people come to another country and they try to try to intimidate other people with their own culture is is a bit confusing to me so don't do it you know if you're German and you love German and you hate Germany and you decided to go to France now yeah here's an example right you hate Germany right you're German you grew up you spend there your whole life and you don't speak French very well or you hardly speak French at all but you decide to move to France because you're so fed up with Germany right as a German and so you go to France and nobody can understand you you cannot find a job and you start switching back to your German identity you start wearing your secret German pants your German hat you know and you start speaking half time German, you know, which will never help you get a job, you know. <laughs> oh, and I often get the last thing I'm gonna say about this before I lose another subscriber is that uh, my Russian viewers often ask me, you know, how do I come to Canada? And I say that, first of all, try to do it from your country in this case Russia you know don't come illegally because you only make matters worse and it'll cost much more money so try to do it from there and secondly and probably most importantly learn English before you come here okay
because like that guy from Germany, if he doesn't speak French, it would be very difficult for him to find a good job in France. Or let's say if you decide to go to Japan, and you only know in Japan like the sentence, I don't speak Japanese, I don't think your chances of getting a good Japanese job in Japan would be high. You know what I'm saying? So keep watching, stay tuned. And so far I don't have a load yet, so probably soon they'll tell me to start moving west towards Ontario, because there's nothing here. That's what it looks like today, so be safe. I'm Sergey Drachev in Quebec City, Quebec. Au revoir.